Hello, uh, my name is Konstantinos Kotsalos. I'm a power systems engineer and working uh, on the R&D department of European Dynamics. European Dynamics has led the work package where the one system has uh, been developed. As you probably already know, the scope of one project is to create a fully replicable and scalable architecture that enables the whole European electrical system to operate as a single system. Towards this, a variety of markets allow the universal participation of uh, stakeholders, regardless of their physical location, at every level, from a small consumer to large producers. This video will focus particularly on how stakeholders can exchange securely data in a decentralized manner, utilizing the minimum set of one solutions. But before explaining how we can make a decentralized data exchange between OneNet stakeholders, let's have a look on the OneNet uh, reference architecture. So the OneNet reference architecture is composed of four main components. Uh, firstly, uh, the OneNet monitoring analytics and dashboard. This basically uh, reports analytics in real time or utilizing historical data from the logs of the OneNet connectors. This is a component that is on the top of the uh, picture that you can see on the right hand side. Then the OneNet orchestration workbench, which is a microservice orchestration platform, which provides an easy uh, way to deploy third party applications from any OneNet stakeholder. And then the two uh, components, the OneNet decentralized middleware, which is responsible for uh, storing any uh, metadata that are necessary for the data exchanges, including the so-called cross-platform services that we will discuss uh, later on. And of course, uh, the core uh, the core component, which is the OneNet connector, that is responsible to enable the peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, data exchange between OneNet uh, uh, actors. You can see that the two bold components, the one at decentralized middleware and the one at connector, because those are the ones that we will focus on today's video. On the bottom of the reference architecture, you can see um, the so-called uh, one net network of platforms. This is a, a concept meaning that any platform, for example, a DSO platform, a market platform, a data exchange platform is able essentially to connect with the one at middleware simply by deploying the one at connector. This essentially will provide thereafter the decentralized communication of this one net, uh, network of platforms with any other. Continuing a, a few details about the one net uh, connector. Um, the one net connector is the core component, as we discussed already, of the one net reference architecture, which basically enables the execution of the peer to peer data exchange. It is based on a hybrid architecture, compiling, leveraging uh, IDS uh, uh, reference architecture and the Fiber NGSI APIs. And essentially, each one participant is able to deploy this one connector in its own uh, environment in order to uh, have access to the one ecosystem and essentially execute any decentralized uh, data exchanges. The core implementation of the uh, OneNet connector is based on the uh, Fiber True connector, which is developed from engineering with certain enhancements that ha have been uh, performed in the OneNet project. A few details about the OneNet connector. It includes a standardized API for any OneNet participant. These APIs basically uh, provide access to uh, in interaction with the OneNet middleware the graphical user interface for connector configuration and usage, the firewall context broker and NGSI data exchange, which is essentially uh, important for register registering data and uh, having any access to context management of the, um, uh, of the data sources. The IDS core services for IDS trusted environment, which basically is the IDSA uh, part for the secure and trusted data exchanges with other um, um, uh, with other actors, and uh, additional one data services that uh, from for some of those we could report the data quality and data harmonization. This next slide refers to the one cross platform services, uh, which are important to achieve data and service interoperability in the one ecosystem. This Cross OneNet cross-platform services reside in the OneNet middleware, which are essentially standard formats of a service description. 
Um, the, onto these services, the user can apply multiple type of service agreement and policies among uh, different users. During the OneNet project, we have identified throughout a long research process between pilot analysis and previous R&D project, a set of 64 cross-platform services, uh, which has been taxonomized in 10 service categories, which are uh, presented on the slide. Um, and the, the, the attributes that they define these cross-platform services are the description of each of them, the methodology that they can be provided, the data producer and consumer mapped to the harmonized energy role model, the business objects that they can be exchanged within this cross-platform service, data quality requirements, data format and standard data models. Among these uh, cross-platform services, the majority of them have been assigned with uh, uh, standardized uh, semantic, semantic profiles and ontologies. Most of those were referring to the European standard market profiles from entry, the so-called ESMP profiles. Of course, users, wanted users can custom, customly uh, define new services upon which they can provide data offerings. Here, we can see in this slide the interplay between a participant, the connectors, and the middleware as they are presented in here. It is a pure peer-to-peer -peer, uh, full decentralized ecosystem for interoperability between the uh, one participants. In our example that we will explore in the upcoming uh, slides, we have a particular case when one, where one uh, one participant A is a seller and unit operator, which basically who is responsible for um, setting uh, settlement results with uh, aggregators. So in our example, participant B will be an aggregator, which will be basically requesting and retrieving uh, settlement results from the settlement unit operator. Now we will continue with this with a short tutorial, which basically summarizes the steps that they are the necessary steps um, for uh, executing data exchanges between one net stakeholders. And particularly in our example, we have recorded uh, an example where a settlement the, where the settlement unit operator provides offers um, offers um, settlement results, and then on the other side, an aggregator retrieves this uh, settlement data. The video is recorded because the the two uh, the two environments, the settlement unit operator and the aggregator, are essentially one connectors that are de deployed in different premises. It will be quite difficult to uh, have a sort of demonstration without recording this because we have um, uh, we cannot do this uh, similar simultaneously. Here you can see the login page. Um, obviously, we will start with the settlement uh, unit operator accessing the OneNet uh, connector. Here you can see the main screen of the uh, OneNet connector. You can see information about uh, historical information like the uh, data entities that they have been consumed, data entities that they have been provided by this user, offer services that they have been offered from this user, subscriptions to um, uh, the settlement operator uh, services and pen any pen pen subscriptions to the settlement operator and of course the health status of the connector uh, of the connector here we do see um, the cross platform services the whole the whole um, uh, the whole list of the cross platform services you can see uh, the taxonomy in the uh, 10 different um, uh, categories that we discussed previously here you have filtering options to uh, sort out uh, the necessary uh, cross-platform services. And here we will basically create a new offering, as you uh, saw, uh, for particularly for the settlement results. You can see basically now we will type the corresponding details about this uh, settlement data. We will find the appropriate uh, or the relevant uh, cross-platform services. You can see it refers to settlement data. Here we have the option to apply uh, policies in uh, this service, uh, for example, data uh, po uh, data policies, date policies on uh, on this uh, service. This refers the, to the semantic definition, which is, and you can see obviously the harmonized semantics of this uh, particular category. And uh, on this, you can see other type of policies that one can uh, apply into uh, this uh, uh, service. 
A quite interesting one is the role restrictions, which we have basically in the project, we have assigned all the harmonized energy role models, and you can apply policies to allow users, particular users with a particular role to view this uh, service. Once we have created this service, uh, the aggregator on the other side will be able to subscribe in this service and accordingly uh, view data uh, to be uh, consumed. So we have logged in from the other side as an aggregator. The aggregator goes to the subscriptions to create a new subscription from the OneNet ecosystem. Here we can see previous subscriptions to other uh, services from other actors. And now basically what we will do is to, to query in the OneNet ecosystem for new uh, service um, service offerings. Particularly now in, on our example, we will uh, query, we will search for the a specific one that we have created previously for the settlement results uh, from the settlement operator. You can see the one that has been created previously from the settlement operator. And basically this, we, we will add also a comment for the settlement operator to view. And by saving this subscription, a notification and a request will be uh, sent um, to uh, the settlement operator. You can see the status of the service that is currently pending because it needs to be acknowledged and accepted, of course, from the um, from the settlement operator. And this is the very next step on um, on acknowledging this uh, service and uh, subsequently provide data which can be thereafter consumed from the aggregator. We can see that there is a pending, a pending request. You can see that it appears in bold and the status is pending. Now, once that it has been acknowledged, we can accept it and save so that the status, as you can see, has been changed. And now the very next step that we can do is to access the data exchanges and make a new provision of uh, data. That's what we're essentially are gonna do right now. You can see we're adding a, a couple of attributes for this um, data offering, settlement data for the 16th of February for a couple of uh, market time units. What we add accordingly the uh, the necessary file. You can see that it's an XML that is um, that basically um, follows the harmonized uh, profile. We found the uh, the appropriate a service offering from this user, the one that we have created previously that we assigned it with this data offering. And then we save it. And basically upon this, any actor that has an active subscription for the uh, this service offering will be able to uh, list and retrieve uh, this data. And this is essentially the very next step that we will uh, look. So consuming or receiving data, from the point of view of the aggregator, as you can see. Now we, first we can have a look that the subscription has been accepted, correct? That what we performed in the previous step, the service has been accepted. And now we will uh, go on the consuming of data. We see that there are a few new data sources. You can see them that they are bond. Basically, the very next step is to access it and download the corresponding data. You can see that it refers to these market time units that we've said previously from the settlement in the operator. And you can see that the file has been downloaded. This basically concludes a whole uh, uh, process uh, with the very necessary steps for the peer-to-peer uh, -peer data exchange between the settlement operator and the aggregator. Of course, it is very important to mention that we have noticed that uh, you can make all the uh, uh, necessary steps to exchange, to, to subscribe to a service, to make an offering, and accordingly on the other side, from the consumer side, subscribe and consume data from the graphical user interface. But there is a complete list, a collection of open APIs with the necessary documentation that all users can uh, uh, 
perform these steps through uh, open APIs. So the uh, graphical user inter interface is rather to streamline the process from uh, for the different users. All the steps can be perform for performed in a programmatical way. Now on the, this slide, we will summarize the one advantages. Basically, uh, one key advantage is that uh, the one connector can be open to any stakeholder. So essentially, once a user deploys an one connector, it, he gets access to the whole one ecosystem. So it's a rather simple process of uh, typically deploying the connector at, uh, at the premises of an user, and then uh, the access to the one net ecosystem uh, is assured uh, through the one net connector. Then the the so-called uh, one net cross-platform services we have proposed uh, the, this taxonomy of uh, ten categories with uh, sixty-four uh, 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 sixty-four cross-platform services with more than uh, one hundred business objects and an open process for users to identify and uh, define new uh, new services within this category. Also, the authorization and authentication of the uh, one participants essentially is a process that it is assigned with the IDS ecosystem. So once a, 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 an actor requ requests for a one connector, it gets the proper identity uh, attributes that they are registered in the one net ecosystem. The, the key advantage is that the uh, data exchanges with between the one net actors, it happens in a purely decentralized manner and only uh, metadata are stored in the decentralized um, uh, middleware. So the, the data exchange it happens uh, purely between the provider and the consumer. Also, we offer a, an easy to use um, uh, graphical user interface and the set of the collection of open APIs that we discussed previously. So it's an, it's optional for a, for a user to choose between APIs or graphical user interface. Obviously, as the OneNet ecosystem is a purely decentralized uh, architecture, it can be easily scale, scalable for um, numerous uh, stakeholders. For um, Having more information on the development of the OneNet solutions, you can access uh, our GitHub link uh, to, to view all the necessary documentation of the OneNet connector and the uh, appropriate solutions. And also you can consult uh, other relevant uh, deliverables that they have been, uh, developed in the OneNet project for the design of the OneNet solutions, either through the links or through the Cordis or uh, Zenodo. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, we hope that this video was quite helpful for you to understand uh, the steps of uh, how to uh, execute a, a data exchange between, between different uh, one, -net, uh, one net actors. Uh, please contact me for any uh, information you might need on the email that is illustrated on the slide. Thank you once again. Thank you.